Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Hello and welcome to episode 144, the four phases that empaths move through. Before I share this episode, I want to give you a little update that's really exciting. Tony is coming out with an amazing course specifically for entrepreneurs that are empaths. It's going to be amazing. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you get notification and updates when it goes live. Go to TonyCMitchell.com and put your name on his newsletter. So in this episode, we break down the four phases of being an empath, and you may be surprised at what phase you're in. So enjoy the show. Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited you're here. Today is all about the four phases that empaths move through. So I feel like you're the expert in empaths. You are the expert. Um, I've definitely lived it um, also. So we have a lot to talk about today. Yes, we do. And by the end of this episode, you'll understand what phase you're in. And I think you'll have more clarity around all of the experiences that you've experienced as an empath. So just hearing this, we'd like to hear your insights at the end of this. Yeah. You could put it in the comments, you could put what it, you could in. inbox us and you could tell us what phase you're in or even if it's just an insight that you had around a certain phase that you used to be in. So let's go to number one. So phase one is, we'll call it the unaware stage. So phase one is the unaware stage. And in this stage, you're not aware that you are actually an empath. You're not aware of the name. You're not aware that you have the ability to actually feel other people's emotional states. And when you're in this phase, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of pain. And I'm thinking of a lot of confusion and a lot of pain that I actually went through in this phase. I am too, because I didn't even know, I never heard the word empath. I remember being in college. I was always out drinking (laughs) at parties and clubs and bars and whether it's a college thing or what I was doing, but it was Tuesday through Saturday. That's what I was doing. And I didn't realize it that I was really going through a lot of anxiety at different points until I had a panic attack. And that's when I realized, ooh, I got to slow down on the drinking to get my energy right again. But I still didn't know I was an empath. So you realize that you were drinking to suppress that feeling that yeah, I guess the feeling other people's emotions and being overwhelmed and right. around a lot of people. Yeah. And I can relate to that too, because that's a lot of what I did, especially after I turned 21 and I'd go out to this place called Main Street in St. Charles, Missouri, where I grew up. And I felt like I had to just keep drinking all night to be in that environment because it was just so overwhelming. It was so overwhelming and I didn't know it at the time, but feeling all the energies around me and not even being clear. I think that was a big thing too for me is I wasn't even clear about what my own energy felt like. That's what my problem was. I didn't know what my own energy was. That's exactly what it was. And I think what helped me realize this was understanding that you're the, you're the first one that actually told me about the word empath. This was actually when I, when I moved to Tampa, Florida back in Um, Well, actually, when I first started talking to you at the end of December or the end of 2010, um, you were like, you're an empath. And I kind of took offense to it at first. I was like, wait, (laughs) psychopath, empath, they sound, I just never heard of it before. But then when I started to dive into it, I started to realize, wow, this is what I've been experiencing my whole life. I've been feeling other people's emotional states. So when I'd go out to the bars and I would drink, that was a big reason why I would drink is because... I was feeling everybody's emotional states. And I can remember back in high school, I used to just be overwhelmed inside of the building all day long. It was just when, when I got to PE class and we, we were able to go outside, I felt like I was free. I felt like I was at home. And everything started to connect to all of the pain that I experienced as a kid. I started to find meaning in it in that moment. Yeah, and when you just brought up the fact that you felt like you didn't know your own energy, It makes me think that a lot of the times, sometimes I didn't know what to talk about and feel comfortable with what, I was thinking too much about what would come out of my mouth because it felt socially awkward. So it made me feel more like myself, and I'm putting in quotes, to drink because I was letting go and not allowing my 
mind to get in the way of what I was really what my heart wanted to say you know because you don't really think about what you're saying when you're in the flow you're not thinking what should I say next it's just something that naturally comes out but I found that in college I guess I was still trying to figure out who I was so I was drinking and that's what everyone was doing that I was hanging out with that's interesting is when you say that it makes me go back to even elementary middle high school in my first years of college I once I realized the name the term empath and all of that that's another connection I made was a lot of the times I was tuning into people's energy and figuring out what they wanted to hear yeah. and I was a people pleaser so I was constantly trying to say things that I already knew people wanted to hear and I was unconscious of that until I started to realize there's a name to this I'm experiencing this and there's a lot of pitfalls around this one of them being people pleasing mm -hmm. yeah that's a big one. Oh, yeah I definitely can relate to that too so let's go to phase two phase two we'll call it awareness and this is when you actually you hear the name empath or somebody tells you hey you are feeling other people's emotional states however this comes about you're aware that this is actually happening and once this starts to happen you're like it's kind of it reminds me of when I heard of the law of attraction I'm like oh I got the secret boom it's done and I didn't realize that's where all of the work actually starts yeah. and that's the phase of awareness is you think that well I thought and I listened to my clients and they said the same thing and Lindsay and all these impasse I talked to on a deep level they say the same thing it's like we think that we got it at that moment because we have a name to it a concept we get it but that's where the real work starts and what I found in this phase is it's like a roller coaster ride you have a lot of highs you have a lot of lows and there's a lot of learning to do right and I think when you become aware of it you start to recognize oh that's why I was drained before so I find in the awareness it's almost like your physical body and your emotional mind is like oh I have permission to be drained right now and you're trying to navigate what do I do in these situations when I am feeling drained because isn't that a common thing that pops up that you find with your clients that they're going 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 and they're exhausted but they don't know why they are exactly right so you're you're aware that okay I'm feeling other people's emotions but then now you're starting to become aware that wait I'm not even like we talked about in the last phase I'm not even in tune with what I'm actually yeah. feeling so you go on this game to where every place that you go everything that you do at your job wherever you're at you're you're bringing this awareness to it and you're you're studying it like you would study a book and you're you're thinking wait is this my emotions is this their emotions so I think that's where a lot of the emotional highs and lows start to come from is by definition you start to become inside of your head you start to get in your head a lot and I think that really defines stage or phase two which is awareness is we often get stuck in our head a lot because we're trying to figure out is it their emotions is it my emotions right. what's going on here and just to bring up a point to go with that because a lot of people are kind of staying in their homes this can happen online too like I've sat on Clubhouse I've been on Facebook I Instagram we we all have been I know you are not on Clubhouse just yet but at some point you'll be on there you can easily get sucked into that energy and you could be drained by sitting on there for too long or tuning in without even knowing that it's happening because that's you're sitting in front of we forget that if we're we're doing a Facebook live and there's a hundred people on the Facebook live that's like a hundred people sitting in the audience if you really think about it like that there's a hundred people around you you're holding that energetic space you are taking on some emotions you especially are especially if you're not in your power you know because you're focusing in on them too so your intentions there their intentions there and you start to draw all that energy to you and then all of a sudden you don't realize it's just it's similar as being in the same room as them mm -hmm. and then phase three let's go to phase three of the journey of being an empath and that is we'll call it the awaken empath that's when you go through phase one you go through phase two you realize okay I am an empath and you're going on this journey of highs and lows and you're trying to figure out is it my energy is it their energy and you start to have this clarity because you're bringing this awareness this new awareness to your life and then all of a sudden this clarity starts to come 
this gift is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize all the pitfalls that I was falling into, the people pleasing, the giving away my power, and so many other pitfalls that come with the gift of being an empath. I never used to say no. I never used to say no, even if I wanted to say no, because I feel guilty of upsetting someone. Right, it's like we're scared to say that two-letter word, no. I mm -hmm. don't want to do that, or I'm not doing that, because once again, we're falling back into the people-pleasing phase. We're tuning into the people's energy, and we could feel they really want us to go there. They really want us to do whatever it is they want to do, so we just say yes. Mm -hmm. And then, so the awakened empath, you start to say no. You start to say yes when you want to. You start to catch yourself a lot faster when it comes to when you're starting to people please. And you're starting to get a lot of clarity around my energy, their energy, and the difference between the two. And often too, you start to read more books. You start to join masterminds. You start to get the support that you need and draw the friends to you, the people to you, that you actually need on this journey of being an empath, of fully realizing this gift, because I believe that everybody has this potential to do this, but the fact is that the majority of people, one, they're not even aware that they can do this, so two, they're not gonna get to this stage. So you start to realize that the value of being around like-minded people, so you can have these conversations, so you can process everything that's going on, and you start to go on this journey, and that's why we call it the awaken empath, because you start to awaken of the double-edged sword that being an empath actually is. You start to see how powerful the gift is on one end, and you start to see how negative, how much negativity it actually can bring into your life on the other end. Yes, and also you're comfortable with being by yourself. Because I think that's part of the awakened empath is you actually build out time that that's part of your daily um, habits too, is to be by yourself, not just be surrounded by a bunch of people it's like that mix of having that mastermind and then also reflecting on your feelings and what you're feeling before you go out into that mastermind exactly and you're okay with it yeah and it, it reminds me of before I realized I was an empath I was always on the go I was trying to just avoid feeling these energies that I was soaking in and I was just going non-stop non-stop and that is so true once you go to phase two and you realize oh I am an empath and all this and um, you start to have all of these insights and then you move to phase three to where you're the awakened empath, you start to realize, wait, I need more alone time. That way I can know myself, that way I can know my own energy and get my own energy right and process everything that I've been feeling and soaking in over the last day or the last week or the last year and that way I can show up fresh. So you start to have all these new insights and you'll start to notice all of your habits and your paradigms start to shift when you're in this phase. And just to add a little tip, this goes away from the phase, but it is a little tip that I'll add in here, and we can do another episode on how you can work through these phases, but walking has really helped me, and you kind of started me on that, is waking up in the morning before you see people, um, going for a walk in nature and having your time alone before you go out into the world so you know exactly what you're feeling before you start getting on the phone. Right, and I really, I think anything physical with impasse is huge yeah. because a lot of the times, all these energies we're feeling in our body, it's what I notice a common theme with impasse is they want, a lot of times they're not fully present in their body because it's like our spirit is trying to go into la la land or into this other dimension. That way we can that's avoid like, all of the pain that's in our body. And I found that physical activity like walking or any kind of physical activity it starts to help the empath get inside of their body to where you're more grounded. So, because if you're if you're all the way in la la land all the time, well, you're not living this human experience. And if you're all the way in the earthly realm all the time, then you're not you're not able to tap into that inspiration and that peace and that all the creativity that flows into you when you start to go into the la la land. Right, and I find as a medium, and you find this, I'm sure too. You want to be in that spirit realm and, you know, in quotes, la la land, because that's actually the reality of our soul. So we're trying to grasp that feeling of love and unconditional love and want to stay there and stay in that high space. But because we're still living here, there's things that will actually benefit our, our physical body and that is moving. So we have to do that to have that balance. And I think that's a hard thing sometimes, but it's important. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to phase four, and we'll call that the expert empath. And 
This phase is all about owning who you are. It's all about creating the style of boundaries. It's all about eliminating people pleasing. Because as you went through phase three, you brought this new awareness into your life and you start to create this new paradigm. And of course, it takes time to start to master, to begin to master that new paradigm, to begin to master this gift. And that's what the expert empath does. The expert empath is using their gift, they're feeling energized most of the time, and they're using this gift to empower them, their life, in the relationships, and their career, in every area of their life. Yeah, and also I think it's like really keeping track of that maintenance for yourself, like knowing that you don't have to get completely burnt out and drained if you're an empath. You can actually get energy from it in a really powerful way. And if you drop into that space of, oh my gosh, I'm falling into old patterns where I am getting drained, I'm saying yes to things that aren't working, then you just having the awareness, I feel is in this section, is in this phase. Because I know that there are certain times where I go out and I know exactly how much energy I wanna put out into the world, how many people I wanna work with, like for clients, um, when I wanna go and socialize, when I need to socialize. But if I find myself falling into those old patterns of wanting to be in my shell away from people, not connecting with people, or I find myself overdoing it, I'm aware of it like, oh, that's what happened. And then I kind of shift it. So I feel like that goes with phase four. It does because you do often, you fall back into phase two and phase three and it's a balancing act. It's where Lindsay, it's like, but when, you're, when you start to move to the higher levels, you start to catch it faster, faster and faster. And another thing about the expert empath is at this stage, you realize whether your career, what you're doing is actually empowering this gift or whether it's taken away from it. And what will happen a lot of times at this phase is you'll, you'll start to feel the nudge to quit that career yeah. and to start to move into another career to channel this gift because you came here for a reason. You came here and you're feeling all these energies for a reason. You have this gift for a reason. And if you're not using it, that will drain you also. So at this expert stage, you start to use this gift in a more empowering way, especially in your career. Yeah, and I wanna add something as you're talking. It's making me think of the book, um, Healing Back Pain, because I think we need to talk about this for just two seconds and direct them to that podcast episode. I don't remember the number it was, but um, I don't know what it was titled either, but it was all about healing back pain. When we're in impact, it's very easy to suppress our emotions because there's so much going on and we don't know what's ours and what's not. So there's times where we can, when we're in transition, where we could literally have things going on emotionally and numb out until our physical body shows us this pain or this feeling of being tired to wake us up and think, okay, you gotta change something emotionally. And I feel like that episode is so important and it goes with this whole episode because as an empath, you may have experienced pain or physical um, you know, exhaustion and you don't necessarily have to stay there. And there's a way to get around that too. That's a great point because the fact that you're soaking in all of these energies and you're at times you're suppressing a lot of these emotions, like Lindsay's saying, it starts to show up inside of your body because your body is really an instrument that is connected to your mind. So it's communicating to you in the same way that you'll have a thought come in or you'll have an instinct come in to guide you in your life. Your body, the, the pain that you're feeling or the joy that you're feeling in your body, it's communicating to you as well. We'll link that episode name in the comments and in the description of this. Right, but it's so important to understand the mind-body connection, especially being an empath because your pain, your suppressed emotions, all of the emotions that you're soaking in from everybody else, they will start to show up in your body. And if you're not aware of this, you'll start to go and get back surgery, you'll start to get all these adjustments from chiropractors, you'll start to take all this prescription medicine. And it um, leads to addiction sometimes too. Right, and it, you'll, an you'll start to be addicted to different substances to suppress all these emotions. And there's a lot of things that can happen if you're not aware of the mind-body connection. Another part of the expert empath is you realize that this is infinite potential that you're tapping into. So just because if you think that you're in phase four, you're in the last phase, these are never ending phases. Yeah. 
and you could always create more solid boundaries. You could always show up more powerful. You could always use this gift in more areas of your life and in a more powerful way. So keep that in mind too. So what we want you to do is leave us a comment of any insights that you had for this episode. And if you want, share the phase that you think that you're in. You might even be in between two different phases and that's okay too. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes and remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.